All right, I'd like to open the Deerfield Planning Board meeting July 6, 2020 at 7.10. And uh, this is being held remotely and it has adequate alternative means of public access. Uh, public participation has been provided in accordance with the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, MGL C3820. So the agenda tonight called the order, identify board members in attendance, we'll review minutes if available, review mail, take some public comment if there is some. And then we have two uh, public hearings. We'll continue the public hearing on the stormwater permit application for Yankee Candle at North Street parking lot improvement. And then we have the public hearing of the proposed revised flood law, floodplain bylaw. Then we hope to discuss marijuana bylaw amendments then any old business, any new business, and then any, any business not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to the posting of this. We'll set and a date for the next meeting and we'll adjourn. Is there this, anything else? This meeting is recorded. Just that's another thing to, to note. And this meeting is being recorded. Is it also, it's not live broadcast at all, Jennifer, is it? I don't believe so. I don't believe just so. Recorded. No, just recorded. Sorry. No, it's just being recorded, but I will put it up on the website, the recording tomorrow morning. Yeah, be available. All right. All right. So as we have practiced uh, in the past, in order to do uh, votes, we have to do roll call. So the first thing we want to do is identify um, who is in attendance. Um, so uh, let me just go through this, and if you can state your name if you're there. Uh, Rachel. Rachel Blaine here. Ann Mary. She's coming on Paul. right now. Paul Ellis. Uh, Rachel Ellis, I'm here. I'm Paul Ellis, I'm here. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> um, uh, Denise Mason. Denise Mason here. Anna Lee. Wolf cool, Emily. Wolf cool here. Max. Max Agee's Max present. And Anne Marie, did you come on? Anne Mary? And I'm John Waite. Wow, seven out of seven. Congrats. This is fantastic. Thank you. Um, well, you got more than seven, right? No, oh, Tony doesn't. Tony's doesn't count for that. This was the uh, planning board members to make sure we have a quorum, and it, certainly we do. Um, review minutes from our last meeting was only a couple weeks ago, June 15th. Um, we don't have them, no? We haven't seen them. No, no, I don't see them. I, I remember who you are now, Donald. You, you are. You're, you say, okay, you know. Paul, Paul, we're reviewing right. minutes here. Um, <laughs> But we don't have minutes, John. I don't believe we don't have minutes. All right. So let's make a plan to review yeah. minutes. Um, so we're going to go back. There was some confusion, I think. You know, Paul used to take them as as clerk. Um, last last month we voted and Mary as clerk. Um, I think Sue was helping out doing the minutes the past couple months, but there was some emails, I think. So Anne Mary, could you follow up with Sue on the the minutes for last month? Ann Mary is not on. She was trying and she's no longer, I don't see her name anymore. Going. John, I'll check in with Ann Mary um, and Sue. I'll take that on. That's his Rachel. Yes, that would be perfect. Yep. And I'll make sure that we have them meetings notes for both before the next meeting in August. So that we can review them before we arrive at the meeting. That's ideal. All right. And then we come to um, review mail. I got one piece of mail uh, from the Waitley Zoning Board about putting in solar uh, a solar field. But, uh, <laughs> very interesting, but we don't need to discuss it too much. <laughs> and then um, this is the time when we take 
public comment, if someone has a quick question or comment to the planning board yes. about something that's not on the agenda. Um, so just to remind people who are uh, listening, they've called into this meeting, you have to identify yourself if you um, want, to, want to say anything. Does anybody want to uh, talk Chris about anything Curtis. quickly? I am on the call. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Good. All right, then let's get right into our continuation of a public hearing of a stormwater permit application for Yankee Candle at 5 North Street for parking lot improvements. How we left it last at our last meeting was we were going to continue it. Planning board members were going to go visit the site and um, make, make a couple of decisions. I think one was whether we need a peer review and the other is whether we could vote on this um, uh, action to uh, the site plan review to have them pave the parking lot. So, Rachel, were you in sort of taking the lead on that meeting? Actually, Is yes. Um, everybody who was present on that walkthrough is here. Annalee, Denise, Paul, and I walked uh, the property and, and had a preview of the project with Tony. Um, it's a very straightforward project. I will invite my colleagues to uh, add their comments. Um, Tony made a good presentation. Um, so anybody else uh, before I... I, I talked with Tony about it, and Tony described it, and we had the paperwork there, and and it uh, it stops at the uh, at the brook that goes through the back. The other side of the brook is my property going up to up to Conway Street. So I, I don't have a problem as long as they keep that those two those two places up there in the parking area. Annalie had a little bit of an engineering um, lesson. She learned about the, the, what do you call it? The, what do you call those things? Tony, help me out. Dry wells. Dry well. Yeah. Oh yeah, dry wells and swells, yes. So that was very helpful. And um, Denise, anything that you were? No, I didn't foresee any issues at all. It was really well explained. Right. It seemed a very straightforward project um, and not actually n not a dramatic difference. In fact, in many ways, an improvement to the, what is existing. Um, it will make it so that they have better access to that building. There was a question at our last meeting about whether or not we would be having a peer review. review and peer review, yeah. Peer review, right. It sounds like you're advising we don't result. need a peer review? My recommendation is that we wouldn't necessarily have a peer review on this. It did seem a very straightforward project. Um, I, I think for anything more elaborate. Uh, and I also, I just would like to, um, I would like to. What I, what I would like to ask for is to have, is to have somebody go through and make it as a, um, as a, re, to have a, to have them come and show us that they've actually completed what they said they did. And I don't think we need to have anybody come in and do a peer review. That's my feeling right now. As part of our conservation commission approval, we have to do, uh, I have to do a certification letter and an as-built plan. So, satisfy a condition that the planning board might have as part of our stormwater permit, I'd be happy to copy the planning board on that as bill plan and certificate of um, compliance request to the commission. And um, that would give you the uh, record of how it was built and that everything was in substantial conformance to the plan. So uh, that's not a problem if you want to add that as a condition to the stormwater application permit. I'm happy with that. And could you just remind us why um, was there also a site plan review application? No, it doesn't trigger that, John. Um, okay. It triggers the stormwater application permit because I think we're uh, uh, threshold. the threshold is pretty small. It's only 12,000 square feet to trigger an, a stormwater permit application. I think we we're like 14,100 and I don't have the exact number, but it was just a small 
um, access to that, but that still requires in a commercial sense uh, uh, the requirement to come before the planning board. Right. It is a very right. small project, yeah. Rachel, you want to? Sorry, right. can you or? hear me? Yep, you're back. You okay, are. so yes, I move that we, um, I don't know what I'm moving. Sorry, I got cut out. So we're really going to approve the uh, stormwater permit for 5 North Street with the condition that we see the as-built plans. Fair enough. Yes, I I move that we approve the construction building as proposed. The, it's not construction, the parking lot. Stormwater. Stormwater. Well, stormwater plan for the parking lot, right? Yes. Great. Public hearing first. Wait. I'm just, that's a procedural thing. Yes, it is. Hold on. I am so frustrated. And ask for any public comment just to make yeah. sure that. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Do we have a motion from Rachel? Do we have a second? I see Anne. Ann, oh, so Ann, do we. I see Anne Marie here now. <laughs> Didn't have before. Anne Mary. And Mary. Okay, so I move that we open a public hearing for public oh. comment um, oh, to sorry. review. We have to open the public hearing. That's what I, I, I thought. I, did. I think you opened it last week. I think you opened last, it right. last time. The last Didn't meeting. We? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we got to. So we're just continuing it. Oh, yeah, oh so sorry. We, sorry, sorry. So we have to yeah, yeah, yeah. we have to close it before we. Uh, right. right. So sorry. Is there any right. is there any other uh, comments? Any other public comments about this? Hearing none, I move we close the public hearing for the stormwater Second. of Five North. Second, any discussion? Second, Rachel Blaine. Wait, just right. Oh. All right. I, Rachel so Blaine. This is, this is just so this to is close motion, the public hearing. Motion to close the public hearing. Um, so all those in favor, say aye. Um, Rachel. Aye, Rachel Blaine. And Mary. And Mary Cloutier, aye. Paul. Aye. Paul Alice. Denise. Denise Mason, aye. Emily. Emily Wolfcool, aye. Max. Max Antes, aye. And John Waite, aye. Excellent. We closed the public hearing. Now, Rachel, can we go back to your motion? No, I, I move that we approve the project as presented. We approve the stormwater permit for the parking permit. lot at 5 North Street, North Street. in Deerfield, as presented, uh, with the condition that we get the, um, the as-built plans. Uh, who's, who you, Tony, you were with the who, who, building inspector or DPW? Or? No, um, uh, we, we, I haven't received it yet, but it was approved. The order conditions, um, we have to go through the Conservation Commission on this. So one of the typical um, conditions of that order conditions is to supply the conservation commission with a certification letter that the, the plan, uh, the improvements were built in accordance with the plans and also an as-built plan. And so with your condition on the planning board, I would just copy you on that as-built plan and my uh, certificates require, uh, our stat should satisfy that condition. That you're requesting. Perfect. Yeah, Do we have a it should work out fine. Motion? Second, anybody? I just have a question. Um, as I'm trying to get up to see the conflict of interest. If you could just hold on a second, we need a second before we can then I'll ask for discussion. Sorry. I second it. And Mary Cloutier, I second it. All right. So Rachel uh, made the motion. Uh, and Mary seconded it. And now for discussion. Yes, Emily. Um, yeah, I just have a question with conflict of interest as I'm trying to understand those rules more carefully. Um, with Paul as an abutter, is he does he vote? Does he abstain? And that fits in with conflict of interest. I just need an explanation about that. Good question. And uh, I think Paul, you made it clear in the minutes last meeting that you are in a butter you you own the property abutting this um, right. you, you know the main thing is to state that to make it very clear um, 
you know, we, we could probably err on the side of caution. Like, we don't need your vote, Paul, necessarily. So if you want to uh, okay, I do. abstain, that's probably appropriate. Yeah. But, you know, either way. Right. All right. Yeah, just All so right. you good, understand, good. Uh, I'm, I'm one of the, uh, the butters that are going north behind the building. And, um, and I, uh, we went and looked at it, and I was perfectly happy after we got done looking over the the property but i can all right i want everybody to know that i am in a butter yeah so in this case you're in a butter and then you won't you won't vote as on the on the motion with the planning board sure. and that's good yeah all right any other discussion all right all those in favor um going down the list rachel rachel blaine aye and mary and mary cludier aye paul um not not voting yeah. Uh, Denise. Denise Mason, aye. Annalee. Annalee Wolfcool, aye. Max. Max Antes, aye. And I'm John Waite, aye. So, 601. It, uh, it is approved. Thank you, Tony. Well, thank you all. I really appreciate taking time, come to the site and, and, um, and reviewing the improvements. I think you'll be happy once we get it completed and um, look forward to getting into that as built plan. Thank you for your time and effort. I really appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Jimmy. Thanks. Take care. All right. Just uh, before I go on to the next one, I will say that um, our new members, Annalie and Denise, did take the ethics and conflict of interest course the most recently so we appreciate them reminding us sometimes that uh <laughs> we always have to think reminders to think. exactly very helpful all right next up is the flood plane um ah uh, shoot i don't know if i have that in front of me does anybody have the uh Public hearing notice for the flood plain. Uh, shoot. I saw it in the paper the other day. It was posted. Chris, do you happen to have it? Um, I, I do not have the notice. Daniel, do you re represent Janice? Is that is that how, what you were doing? So it seems right. to me like this is one of those roles that I need to play as clerk. Um, it, so yeah. where do I find these things and how can I be prepared for next time, I guess is my question. That is a very good question. So, you know, back in the day when we used to get together, there was we had a folder and our box on each project, and and in that would be these kind of things. There would be the um, uh, there would there would be the public hearing announcement. There would be if they if they did mailings to the abutters, there would be the receipts from the uh, certified mail and thing like that that we could review. So I think now we just have to work more closely you know, with with Sue and the folks in the office to just verify that that is in fact all all in place. Um, Sue does send me um, a fair amount of things. Um, so we can just read it if you want. I can pull it up online and read it if that would help you. That's what I'm looking for. Do you do you have it? It is online, so if you yeah. go to our website and then go to today's date and planning board meeting, the documents are there. So there's the um, proposed amendments to Deerfield Floodplain District Zoning Bylaw, four pages. Do you see it? So you would... Yeah. Uh... Yeah, there should be that little public hearing, that shorter thing somewhere. Yeah, there was one that was done in two, June 25th, 2019, but no. I see you have a newer one. You know, 
that one is good enough, and I'll just change the date. Because so that is exactly what we're doing. Do you want me to read that? So I have, yeah, I have that. So oh, okay. Right. So I'd like to open the public hearing pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 40 A S five. The Town of Deerfield Planning Board will hold a public hearing on Monday, July six, two thousand twenty, uh, via online meeting on the proposed amendments to the floodplain district zoning bylaw. The proposed amendments update the floodplain regulations and clarify the uses that are permitted, prohibited, and permitted by special permit in the floodplain district. The full text of the floodplain bylaw can be found on the town of Deerfield's website, um, and paper copies can be attained at the Deerfield town clerk's office uh, upon request. Good. So I'd actually like to add a little bit to that is that we did in fact have public hearings on this uh, last year. And there was some discussion at several different planning boards and we had kept a, a few small questions continued to arise and it took longer than we, than we kind of wanted it to. So we felt it was important to republish, to, re, uh, to redo the public hearing. So that's what we're doing tonight um so, sort of starting over again and i would say that this also makes it so our two new members can participate fully and that this will now they don't need to have been at the prior uh meetings thank you so chris curtis has been our consultant on this he's been very helpful and i guess uh chris if you could just give us a quick update and overview of of the floodplain bylaw, proposed floodplain bylaw. Sure, I'd be happy to. Uh, I think uh, the background on this is that the uh, idea for updating the floodplain zoning bylaw emerged from um, a townwide, there was a townwide forum held um, in preparation for the town uh, doing a municipal vulnerability preparedness plan. Uh, state grant uh, funded that plan and out of that townwide forum, there emerged um, a set of objectives and strategies that the town agreed to. And, and one of the top 10 strategies was to update the town's floodplain zoning because it was felt that it was very for uh, a very, very long time. Um, so the town ultimately requested grant funding from the state and got, got uh, some grant funding to help the zoning bylaw and um, there are some some um, basic components to it that I'll run through I also wanted to mention that there is a floodplain district map that we prepared um, for the town uh, because the town only had uh, their their FEMA maps uh, the, the agency maps of the the floodplain, um, those uh, have been difficult to access. So the town does have a, a floodplain zoning map now that accompanies this, this bylaw, um, or is intended to in any case. Are to, to really protect the town's uh, life and property from the, the pollution that, that occurs with flooding and, and preserve the natural flood control areas in, in town um, so that uh, the um, going forward. The, um, the existing zoning um, in town, uh, again, really doesn't address the, the issues uh, of flooding that um, are are really recommended by the National Flood Insurance Program. The, the, the bylaw doesn't really meet the, the standards that the, the Flood Insurance Program. So that's the main reason that it's that it's needed. Um, the map is um, really based again on the, the federal flood insurance rate maps or firm maps that are prepared by the federal government for the Town and the maps show that there is a large floodplain area in, um, in the historic Deerfield section of town along the Deerfield River, um, a narrower floodplain along the Connecticut River, a fairly narrow band, 
and then some very, very modest floodplain areas along uh, minor brooks in town, such as Bloody Brook and the uh, Mill River. Those are fairly narrow bands of, of floodplain. Um, so um, the bylaw set establishes a special permit process for um, any development that um, would occur in the floodplain and um, the findings that the, must be made in order um, to get a special permit are that proposed use should not result in an increase in flood levels and should meet the state building code standards for flood proofing and elevation um, and also from the river. Um, the uh, basic bylaw structure is that there are permitted uses, uses by special permit. And the permitted uses are agriculture, all agricultural uses, forestry, recreation, conservation, wildlife management, and buildings that existed uh, prior to the adoption of, of the bylaw. The prohibited uses are altering dumping, filling, or removal of riverine materials, dams or impoundments, commercial or industrial uses, uh, parking or storage of vehicles or trailers within 200 feet of the riverbank, dumping of garbage or discharge of pollutants. And then the uses by special permit include single family homes, um, residential accessory uses, and um, enlargement or alteration of an existing structure. So those are the, the basic fundamental components of, of the bylaw in, in summary. So I just to give a, another sort of update is um, in the current bylaws, you'll see 40, section 4300 floodplain district is very short. And it's it's we're not changing a whole lot of things, but I think giving a little more specific specificity to it, and I think as Chris said, sort of protect the town a little bit. Um, the the issues in the past have been that we didn't have new maps from whoever the U.S. floodplain folks are, um, and they're probably not going to come out for a couple of years. So Chris, we thank you for getting us the most up to date maps. Um, we, I had asked several board, several of the planning board members over the past uh, several months what their objections were to it, and we never got to tell you the truth any any specific uh, feedback on that. So I think most of us like the updates, we've participated in it, um, and we even. Eh, and we even went back and, and pushed back on a couple of things just to make sure that farmers, especially farmers who have land on the along some of the rivers, you know, aren't going to have extra expenses or, or regulations. Um, so, Chris, I think you feel pretty comfortable about that now, right? I do. I think it is is worth mentioning the, the changes that we did make. Um, we specifically added to the list of permitted uses um, a statement that says. Uh, a permitted use includes agricultural uses such as farming, grazing, and horticulture, including barns or farm-related structures and the So we wanted to make it really clear that all agricultural uses were um, permitted and did not have to go through any, any permitting process, um, because that was a question that, that came up. Could, could I ask a question? Absolutely. Uh, yep. You just got to state your name there and let us know. Sure. This is Trevor McDaniel from the select board. Uh, I was just um, curious, Chris, just, you know, thinking about Bloody Brook um, and some of the other tributaries that go through town and how we're really hoping to eventually, you know, do some maintenance to clean out so we can get flood water out of town. Um, will, will this impact any of that? Is there any restrictions on, you know, we've been working hard to kind of get approval to get in and start you know, removing dead trees and, you know, kind of get water flowing a little bit through town. Will this, will this affect that at all? Um, 
That is a is a good and fair question, Trevor. Um, we we do have language in here that says that the uh, the river itself there shouldn't be um, altering or dumping or filling uh, uh, in, in terms of riverine materials or dredging. Um, right. it, it doesn't specifically refer to the removal of of brush and trees. Trees, where the riverine materials are defined in the bylaw as essentially the, the bed of the river, you know, the, yeah. the rocks that make up the river, if you will. Right. So, in my opinion, um, the removal of, you know, trees and brush and, and things that are blocking up the river would not be included in, in that um, definition. Okay. I think of like the, the, we talked about maybe Dry Village. Uh, where we had done the culvert replacement, we had talked with working with, you know, conservation and trying to get, you know, from Route 5, you know, to where we've done the culvert over this last week. Um, you know, we're moving a little bit to pull it away from the roadside and candy kitchen area and all. And I just didn't know if, if this too would affect um, our ability to get in and do that. I just didn't want to have any restriction on you know, some of the stuff we've been really trying to get going for the longest time. Do you think, uh, uh, this is Rachel Blaine, um, it, uh, prohibited uses B, no impoundments, dams, or other water obstructions. That does not um, include, I mean, uh, that language, does that include culverts, for instance? Is that, would that be complicating? No, no right? right? No, that does not include culverts. So I think that that would be in the prohibited uses. That's the only one um, that well, has implications. I, I mean, Rachel, right above that, the, the A says uh, prohibited Altering. uses, no, dr no, no dredging. Dredging, yeah, 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 yeah. And and I know there are some places that might need to be, be dredged, dredged, actually, yeah. Trevor. Yeah. Are there? Right. Yeah. right. Yes, not, not so much like a river, per se, but, um, you know, but we're just looking at maybe – you know, if we if we need to, I don't know if you'd call it dredging, but you know, cleaning out some of the brush and <laughs> all. The, I guess you'd call it dredging, maybe. Yeah. I mean, it's not coming but in with a. It's dredging. not dredging to um, build. It's dredging Correct. to um, remove detritus, right? I mean, specifically yeah. to remove buildup of collections, uh, not to remove right. things that are already there. Yeah. But it, what I'm saying, that, but John's point is that the language may just be complicated there. Chris, right. Is no, there any way, way to kind of, yeah. because if somebody is. Um, Hoping to stop you us. You just don't want to exactly complicate things. You know, Trevor, I, I think that, that, you know, that's why we have public hearings and why <laughs> we have the opportunity to, 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 to bring up these questions. I, I think that um, the word dredging um may not be the the best choice of of words in that particular okay. section of the of the bylaw given the town has just applied for a very large grant to to do that <laughs> restoration work <laughs> right um, so you know that 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 bitter uh removing from from mm. that from that uh, language in the bylaw, and and we can do that in a public hearing. That's that's you know that's okay. part of the, the process. Yeah. Chris, we also have right right above there permitted uses. G is municipal or civic uses. So municipal can do things that private can't. I don't know if. It, yep. I don't know. I don't know what overrules what here, but. Uh, right. I mean, I'm we believe in the intent of this. I mean, we truly do believe in the intent of it. We just want to make yeah. sure that still have the ability yeah. to kind of get water out of town. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm Paul else. And I'm, I'm just wondering the whole, uh, kind of like the North side of uh, Sugarloaf street. Um, that's where a lot of people get flooded cellars and different things. And are you thinking in terms of trying to get that to be, uh, opened up so it won't happen? Yes. That's what the culvert project is. Yeah. Yeah. We've got, the, the culvert at Kelleher Drive, and then, um, yeah, I, there may be other areas that we, we could maybe work on to try and get that water flowing. I just know behind, you know, behind the elementary school there, that, you know, that little 
the culvert that goes between the school and the town hall, you know, that get that gets plugged up. And I know they're down to Waitley, but you know, we need to kind of get that water moving a little bit better if we can. Um, if I if I could, um, yep. and this is Chris again, I guess you know, given Trevor's comment, and again the the, the town's ongoing efforts to uh, to clean up these rivers. I would suggest uh, that we alter, that we change the, the language of Section 4308A, um, and I would I would uh, throw this out for your consideration, um, that we say, instead of the language that we have there currently um, in the floodplain area, or rather in the river, is permitted. So we simplify the language. We take out the reference to dredging or removal of riverine materials, um, and we simplify it to say no, no dumping or filling within mm -hmm. the river is permitted. That sounds great. Sure. Yes, I agree. And then the other, the maintenance of the river bank, all the rest. These are all Mass General laws. I mean, actually, a lot of this is the, right. the Mass laws anyway. It reflects. Um, right. Yeah, so okay. that's, that's right. Yeah. This is Mrs. Annalee Wolf Cole. I do have a question. How much is this proposed new? Are these changes sort of boilerplate with what lots of other towns have, or is it a lot that really Deerfield specific? And if so, what are those areas? Chris, you want well, to answer? I think I think it's not. It's, a lot of it goes with mass laws, but Chris can answer. Yes. Yes. And a lot of it is um, based on um, the National Flood Insurance Program has put out model zoning bylaws, which establish standards that they would expect towns to either adhere to or, or um, match to their best of their abilities. So we, we have used that um, extensively in the creation of, of, of this bylaw. Um, so it, it is. It's based on national standards, and as as well as um, what what the state um, is saying. So it's fairly straightforward. Mm -hmm. I, I would say so. Yes. I have another question. Yep. If I could, uh, still Annalee on forty three zero eight D. Actually, I mean this is small, but it says planning board may grant a waiver with a prohibition about vehicles, et cetera, upon proof that a hardship exists, does there need to be a qualifier with that? You know, like significant hardship or, you know, I don't know. I don't know, just a hard, oh yeah, I got a hardship. <laughs> I don't know. It just seems pretty loose. It tends to be economic hardship, Annalie. And that's, it is really a hard one to- um, Quantify? Mm -hmm. Did we try or not? It's not. It, it's, to some extent, it's why we have a special permit, uh, you know, procedure is that we need to make the calls uh, based on the given circumstances. So you, you don't want them necessarily. Got yourself in too much. much. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if, if you have something that could help it, that's great, but um. Hmm. Well, well, I, I think the other alternative, I would, um, I'm just thinking about this out loud as as you talk about this. Um, the other way of doing this would be to put that into the special permit category, um, and and have the same special permit procedures and findings apply to parking and storage of vehicles. Um, oh. as do um, the, the other um, the other things that are allowed by special permit. Mm -hmm. um, hi, this is, is Paul. It, this is Paul Alice. Yep. And what, <clears throat> what I'm what I'm wondering about is that five and ten dumps dumps all the drainage off of the highway on five and ten bypass from Conway Street all the way down to. Um, uh, to the uh, Cumberland Farms, and then they don't care about what happens after it gets down onto the back of my property and down that way. So, 
um, I'm just wondering how do we how do we deal with that? The state basically just says, okay, we're going to dump it out back there and that's it. Is this, Paul, does this have to do with the floodplain bylaw? I believe it does. <clears throat> what you're, what section you're referring to? I mean, it's the, I, on the, I, on the I it, but... of the uh, Yankee candle and um, my, my property there. No, no, no. What section of the bylaw are you looking to, to help to improve? Well, I'm not sure what you mean by that, but... Uh, uh, what well, part of the bylaw, bylaw would address that issue? Yeah. I don't know. That seems to so, be the part of the brook, the only brook that goes down through the center of center of the town i mean that's that's where that goes that may be more a stormwater issue than floodplain that makes okay. sense all right well i i was talking and i was uh, thinking in terms of you know what was speaked of before is that uh we need to open up and get that opened up so that the water just runs right down and gets out of the center of town and that's right there by my property and right down through there and uh so i i'm not sure um I think the main thing we got to figure out is how do we how do we deal with getting that water out of the out of the town? And I think that I think that it's not unrelated to this bylaw in the sense that we're drawing attention in that direction, but it's not directly related to what we're legislating here in terms of building and land use. Land. Okay. That, that's more, uh, you know, civic plan. That's what Trevor's kind of referring to. What well, Trevor? The well, kind Trevor, of um, yeah. okay. strategy that we're employing, building, looking at the culvert. Oh, there's more than one culvert coming down through that area, down through there that goes down by the uh, the Yankee Candle um, building there and so forth. And I thought that's what Trevor was talking about, and it definitely connects with the back of my property and does the same thing. So if yeah. that, that if that brook doesn't get uncovered and doesn't get plugged gets unplugged, then it's going to be building up and and everything's going to come right up and flood the people over there on um, on the you know going north from the center of town. Mm -hmm. We definitely want to right. work on that, Paul, for sure. Yep. Chris, so um, again, I guess going back to what you mentioned before about that section of storage of vehicles, et cetera, is going under special permit. That sounds, that sounds great to me. Mm -hmm. The other, the other question I had, which is maybe also in the, in the general of, uh, as I was saying earlier, being too hard to sort of quantify subjective things, but um, in section 4310B6, uh, uh, the last thing in that section, when it talks about, um, on-site wastewater disposal system shall be located as far from rivers or water bodies as feasible. That's just, that feels so loose. Is there again, any way to tighten that up a bit or is that, would tightening it up be detrimental to the bylaws? I don't know. Well, um, no, I, I, I hear your point and, and you could put a physical distance, a minimum physical distance there. I think what, in our, er our earlier discussion, we were trying to allow some flexibility for existing lots that, um, you know, again, might, this might impose a hardship on if we put a, a hard, you know, say 200 foot distance, for example, just to pick a number. Um, if, if you've got a lot that's only, you know, 150 feet deep, uh, that would obviously create um, it would make that lot unbuildable to create a, a hard distance like that. So we, I think we purposely tried to um, make it somewhat flexible. Um, and, you know, it's part of the special permit process. So the planning board would have the opportunity to take a look at plans and, you know, identify whether or not there was another site for a septic system on the lot with, within the configuration that it had um, or not. I guess I'm saying I'm comfortable with the way it's the way it's worded now, just because it's part of the special permit process. Oh, okay. The board would 
board would have an opportunity to review that in, in each case. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. Thank you. All right. All right. So, 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 so far, we have two, two changes. changes. Sorry. Sorry. Hi, can you hear me now without my uh, telephone? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Oh, this is exciting. Hey, off your telephone. We won't have an echo. There we go. There we go. So on the, um, we're going to make a couple changes. Chris, are you keeping track of these prohibited uses? The parking, we're going to move down to um, yes. special permit. I'm, I'm happy to summarize in detail exactly what those changes would be if, if you would like so that the board could make a, a make a motion to make those changes and not have to redo the public hearing again. Yeah, no, I think these are minor enough that we wouldn't have to. I just do want to ask uh, the planning board granting a waiver is different than a special permit. I'm not sure how different they are. Um, Chris, do you want to weigh in on that or? I think that moving it into the special permit category would make it uh, somewhat less restrictive um, because there's not the hardship provision. I, I'm I'm uh, making the assumption that the hardship provision would go away then, and it would just be a special permit right. uh, use. Right. But it does also make it more specific in that the planning board needs to make specific findings in order to allow that special permit to go forward. And, and the findings are, are fairly restrictive in themselves. So I feel like it would be essentially a wash and it would make the bylaw cleaner and clearer. Good. Um, I also, this is Paul Alice. Uh, I, I'm, I'm believing that um, the, in, the insurance companies really play into this rather deeply into people's property. So um, people that are there, um, such as Richardson's, um, the Candy uh, Park Can't Sandy store, um, they're, they're, they were the ones that really got washed out at the last two years ago. And uh, so it's got a lot to do with the insurance company and, uh, and what the, uh, what's been decided about is what, where it goes and how, how far um, off from the river we are. Well, the other thing I would add about that, Paul, is that um, in order to continue to qualify for the National Flood Insurance Program, which provides help um, with, with that um, for, for landowners, you have to have a bylaw that really is up to snuff and meets the current standards. So this is actually going to help um, ensure that the town is is able to meet those standards and that flood insurance will still be available to to folks good all right and then the other change is just that um taking out the removal of ravine materials and dredging right yeah if i if i could i i'd like to read these to you yeah. so that you can actually make a motion um to accept the changes um, is, is that okay to do now? Yeah, I guess let's just, are there any other sections people have uh, issues with? Max, are you still there? Are you? Yeah, section 4310, uh, C, C3, A, and B. Seems like a pretty substantial change. And the they refer to the base flood elevation, but I I don't you know it's different for different areas, but um, I understand that there's going to come out with new maps and that might change and and it's it's a kind of expensive paragraph there. Wait, wait, say which one is it? Thirty what? I mean forty three what? Forty three ten C. 3A, all buildings and structures erected or substantially improved within a flood hazard zone shall be elevated so as the lowest floor is located at least at or above base flood elevation. All basements, cellars, floor yeah. services shall be located at or above 
base flood elevations. See, and um, I've seen construction in areas prone to flooding where you require that all you know before the bit below that elevation you can go with concrete. You know, like if it's going to flood, it can't be wood, but concrete's fine because you just you power wash the, the mud out when after it floods and. So, so, so Max, I know, Max, if I, if yeah, I could, Chris, I, I'd like to um, explain that a little bit. Um, I think the important thing to read is is the is the sentence just above what you were reading from, and that is the sentence that says that uh, the use must comply with all applicable state and federal laws, including the Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act and the State Building Clo Code including. So those two sections, A and B, below that are actually direct quotes from the State Building Code. And I included those in the bylaw because I thought they were important for people to know about and understand. But they, they are, are already the law in Massachusetts. Those, those Section A and Section B are, are directly in the State Building Code, and, and every use has to comply with those in the floodplain right now. Um, so they're in here really in a sense for informational purposes um, as an example there, of, of the state and federal laws that do apply. But we've written, I mean, if, if they change, then we've got it in our bylaw. Why are we repeating something that's already somewhere else? Um, it's a that's a that's a fair question. Uh, again, I put it in the bylaw because I thought it was such an important component of the state building code that it was worth reiterating here, just to make sure that anyone who is building in the floodplain understands these things. And you might not go to the state building code and read the state building code if you're if you're planning to build a house in town, um, but you would probably look at at this bylaw. So it's it's well, partly it's, educational. It's um, partly informational, uh, but it's it's not um, not absolutely necessary to have those sections here because but because it is the law already. And it is special permit. I mean, it it helps. I, I guess I would say it would help the planning board in making a finding about the special permit. Um, you know, that's one of the things that you you'd want to look at if you're making a special permit, uh, if you're evaluating a special permit. I'm just concerned about people that have existing structures and want to make improvements or, you know. But I, I don't believe it precludes that, Max. It just says that they have to apply for a special permit. Right. This question came up at the at a previous planning board meeting, and I'm not sure, Max, if you were at that one, but uh, I want to clarify that any pre-existing structure in the floodplain would not have to be raised or have or floodproofed um, in order to add an addition to it. The the addition to that structure would have to meet these standards. But the existing building wouldn't have to be changed or raised or floodproofed or anything like that. And I think that was a misunderstanding that several people had about it. Um, well, I'm looking it right here, Chris, and it says all buildings or structures <laughs> erected or substantially improved. So that's an existing. If you're substantially improving, it's an existing building within a right. flood zone, flood hazard zone shall be elevated so that the lowest floor is located at or above base flood elevation. Right. But, but and a, that, a that isn't flood. called out. What is right. that a fundamental elevation? I just, um, I, I don't want uh, to paint, you know, I don't want to take people's options away for stuff yeah. that's already in existence. So, I, I Max, we... this is John. I'm just wondering, Max, what, so if this is already in, the mass general law. Why what, if, I, I guess you're right. We don't need it here, but yet it still doesn't change the fact that it's still the law, right? I, I think 
I think I understand what, what Max is, is concerned about. Um, an important thing about, about zoning in general, Max, is that zoning never, um, it, it can't require changes to, to existing uses. It only affects new development. Um, so you, you can't go backwards and say, you know, we're going to adopt this law and require every building in town to be three stories tall. You, you, you simply can't do that with a, with a zoning bylaw generally. So I, I understand what you're concerned about is you, you feel this might be affecting existing structures, but, but uh, it, it would not. Um, if, if you want, we could try to clarify the language to make sure that that's absolutely clear to everyone by saying, for example, all new buildings or structures erected after the adoption of this bylaw. That would help. How does, Chris, if we're going to use the mass general laws, let's just, can we just use their language? Does that, or is it might not well, say that? This, this is pretty much a, a direct quote from the state building code in here yeah. now, but, but because we're, because we're using it in the context of a zoning bylaw and because there is, you know, confusion from folks like like Max about what, how this would, would, would affect them. I, I can suggest some language to clarify that just to make sure that people understand that it doesn't affect existing structures. And I think, you, you know, adding the language um, after after the approval of this bylaw to that <coughs> section um, would, would would kind of solve that problem. I'm good with that. Max, what do you say? Oh, I still, I don't know why we're gutted in our, our, um, but well, if it, it, if it already exists, then I mean, I'm I'm with you, Max. But um, if it's just helping potential building owners, building the uh, you know developers in Deerfield, is that a bad thing? Well, then why are we? Anyways, I just disagree with the the approach. Right or wrong? I just you know. So we shouldn't we shouldn't warn people. I mean, we can't change the law, right? Right. Well, what he's yeah. saying is, if it does change, and and that's that that then we go back, you know. But right. I, we're kind of that the crystal ball hasn't been invented yet to the, help us to know that. I think, it, and and Ma Max is pointing out that it's just an approach. Like it's an approach to creating a, a, um, yeah. a legislation that is uncomfortable for him. I think. Understanding that, um, I, I don't think it's going to go backwards. I think we're going to have more water issues going forward. I, I think that I feel comfortable with this approach, um, but I do appreciate what Max is saying. I just, I, I feel comfortable with it. And he, he feels uncomfortable with it. I don't think. Can we put something? We just like don't want to. We don't want to. We don't want to put in something that makes people have to jump through so many hoops to do. Right. Improvements to their homes. Yeah, this is Paul. If if you have to go through and, and change things, they're going to have to go into the state to get approved, aren't they? We can't we can't make up things that are going to countermand what's there. Um, I don't know uh, um, what what else what what else can we do? I mean, I think we're pretty well pretty well there, but because we got to get to clean up the, the 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 water drainage out of town. And that's the real piece. I think that's the problem here that we gotta gotta look at. But we don't want to fight the town rule. We don't want to fight the state rules and everything else that goes along with it. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think if we take it out, it doesn't doesn't uh, change the bylaw at all. So, if if you want, if you want, my, my, this is Paul again. My. My son bought the art and antiques uh, place up there by the walk. By the walk, and um, they had a we had a big thing, and he's had it for about four years now. 
and uh, it, it's there's a there's a line that's been put in there that tells you whether you got to go and buy um, insurance uh, over you know a high cost insurance to cover it or prove that you're not in that in that lane where you're going to get flooded. So I think the state state and the and the stuff came in or you got to go and find out an engineering service that comes in and says okay you're going to be flooded therefore you're going to have to you're going to have to buy the state insurance yeah paul right now we're talking about section 4310 c3 i, I, I want to stick to that do, do we want to take this paragraph out or leave it in that's the question that's the only question we're dealing with right now I think, you know, I think the alternative approach would be for Section 3 is to is to put a period after the words Massachusetts State Building Code yep. and delete and delete the including and then the Section A and B. Yeah. The, the reason that I would argue for keeping it in is that, you know, you guys okay? may understand that that's part of the findings that you're supposed to make because we've talked about this now, but uh, Ten years from now, I'm not sure the planning board that's in, in place at that time will recognize that those are important findings that they have to make or, or even understand what the state building code might say about this issue. Um, so I think it, it's valuable to have it in there for that reason. But if you feel like it's unnecessary, you could simply put a, a period after building code and, and take out A and B. I guess my other question would be, because um, Max makes a good point that if the Mass General Laws change, do we have to go back and change our whole bylaws? There, there's several several things in this new bylaw that uh, quote the Mass General Laws, I think. So um, how can we make sure that we, we don't have to go redo ours every time theirs is redone? Here's the thing. I don't think it's going to go backwards. Well, no, we don't think it's going backwards, but even if it goes stricter, do we have to go back and change ours is what I'm saying. Oh, you know? No matter which way. I don't think that's what the language says. I think it has okay. to comply. You have to comply with all applicable state and federal laws. You know, that's the fundamental um, issue here. Yeah. I'm wondering, Chris, if we can say, including you know, including, for example, you know, A and B, which are part of addition nine of the mass building code or something. But if, could do that. if the mass state building code addition 10 comes out, then that that's the one that is the law, obviously. It could, right. could just be, you know. I mean, I think it's, I think it's good to give people a heads up. I think it's a good thing to keep. I'm not uncomfortable with it. I mean, I appreciate the discomfort with something that is tied to, to a legislative body outside of us, but it's a lot of things. The are. warning is the warning is that there flood water is a, is a significant issue. We, and we've recently had an event, and we're not likely to have fewer. Um, the indicators are that we're going to have more. And so this is a way of uh, alerting uh, our residents. I mean, it, it is a special permit, so it's not like we're not permit we're not we're not um precluding the the event. We're just asking for some thought and care. Well, this this section C actually, Rachel says that we, in order for us to issue a special permit, we must find the proposed use is compliant with all the following provisions. So right, but we, we can't say they can build lower down, you know, we have to make sure that they meet this. Oh, I see what you're that. saying. Yeah, okay. so we don't have a lot of say on this one. This is a law. So it's a, as Chris said, it's a reminder to us and to future planning boards to make sure we look at this. This is Denise. I, th I think it's really important to keep all the relevant information in there. I'm not. I'm not for taking it out. I think we should keep it in yeah. for reference. 
And I like Chris's thing, a statement of, for example, and as Rachel saying, in this edition, da da da, for A. Yeah. All right, Chris. Let's. I think we just change that wording a little bit, huh? Yeah, and I think. Um, can, can I can I propose? Yep. Important change to address Max's concern. Um, it would be in A, uh, where it says all buildings or structures erected, and I would change the next part to or substantial improvements erected, comma, after the adoption of this bylaw, comma. And then it goes back to within a flood hazard zone. All right, so that so that that says only new buildings then would this this uh, have to comply with this. That's right. Or new construction. Yeah. That's right. Good. Just to make that absolutely clear. Yeah. I'm good with that. All right, so we have three changes, um, and then we can make a motion. I think. Um, actually, this, we're in a public hearing, an open public hearing. I guess, Chris, do you think you need to restate the wording before we close the public hearing? Um, I think it would be helpful to restate the wording and um, for the planning board to make a motion to make those changes. Yeah. Before you before you vote on whether to recommend the bylaw to town meeting, right? All right. Could you go back and tell us the sections again? Um, I can. Section four three zero eight, letter A. Proposed new wording would be: no dumping or filling within the river is permitted. So that's the change to set to the first sentence only. 4308D would be deleted. And the first sentence of that section, which reads, parking or storage of vehicles, trailers, or equipment within 200 feet of the riverbank, period, would be moved to the uses by special permit. And it would uh, become 4309B5. That section. And then the last change is in 4310C3A. First sentence in, in that section A would read, all buildings or structures erected or substantial improvements erected, comma, after the adoption of this bylaw, comma, within a flood hazard, and the rest reads as, as it currently is shown. Great. Anybody from the public have any comments? So, um, hearing none, um, if we're feeling good about this, can we have a motion to close the public hearing on the floodplain bylaw, proposed floodplain bylaw? It's Emily, I'm that we close the public hearing on the Floodplain bylaw. Second. Rachel Blaine, second. Any discussion? All those in favor of closing the public hearing? Um, uh, Rachel. Rich Blaine, aye. Ann Mary. Ann Mary Cloutier, aye. Paul. Paul Alice, aye. Denise. Denise Mason, aye. Emily. Emily Wolfcool, aye. Max. 
Uh, close the public hearing. Uh, aye. And John Wade, aye. So the public hearing is closed. Now the planning board can. Uh, our goal here would be to make a recommendation to the, uh, any bylaw changes have to go to town meeting. So all we do is make a recommendation to send this proposed amendment to Deerfield uh, floodplain to the town meeting. Does anybody want to make that motion? I, I move that we um, forward this proposal to the town meeting for a vote. I'll second. So this will be the proposed amendment to Deerfield floodplain district zoning bylaw updated 7620. So that was, uh, uh, they, that I, was didn't say, I didn't say Paul Ellis, but Paul Ellis second. <laughs> Thank you. I was going to I was going to state that Rachel moved it and Paul seconded it. Any discussion? Paul Ellis. All those, in, all those in favor. Rachel. Rachel Blaine, aye. Anne Mary. Anne Mary Clooney, aye. Paul. Paul Alice, aye. Denise. Denise Mason, aye. Emily. Emily Wolf Cool, aye. Max. Uh, to send this to town meeting, uh, no. John Wheat. Aye. So we recommend this proposed bylaw to town meeting on a 6-1-0 vote of the uh, planning board. Excellent. So, Chris, if you um, want to send around the revised one, I took notes, so I'll see that it's got the three changes we made. And then we will ask the, uh, I guess, town office to send it to the select board and the select board will figure out when the next town meeting is and figure out how to put it into that warrant. All right. Thank you. That was uh, some good work. Yes. Um, so before you go, Chris, um, our next point of discussion on the agenda is, um, yeah, just lost it on my screen, but I know it's here. Is a discussion of marijuana bylaw amendments. So, hopefully, all planning board members received. Uh, Sue sent out an email. I think not too long ago. Well, on. Um, On July 2nd, she sent out a bylaw that we had been working on and that was last updated on February 10th, 2020. Um, oh my God, now I actually have, have lost count, so I need some help maybe with this. Is um, We had several public hearings on it, And then we knew it wasn't going to probably go on the warrant this past time, the past annual uh, meeting. So I guess the question is whether we have to continue, have to have another um, public hearing. Can I make a Whether we want to make some changes to it. Yes, Trevor. So um, thank you for allowing me to, to visit today. Um, I was hoping to have a, a conversation with the planning board about <clears throat> this marijuana bylaw and some changes I would like to see um, and, and kind of things that the select board has been, has been dealing with. And um, so last town meeting, you know, I had, I was going to move forward with a, with another bylaw proposal, um, but one that you had had before your board before, but, but in talking with John, um, I had requested that, you know, that, um, I know John was going to speak against the motion that I, I was bringing forward to town meeting. I felt it wasn't fair to bring just one um, 
one bylaw to town meeting and not the other. And I thought if I could request um, that we kind of both boards take a step back and look at this holistically and work together on what we want to see as a town going forward to regulate marijuana. Um, we did a lot of work as this, this board has done a lot of work, select board, the town has done a lot of work to kind of deal with the marijuana issue in town and figure out how we want it to be regulated. And um, I'm a little concerned with some of the, well, quite a bit of the language in the current bylaw before your board. And um, there's a few things that we wanted to change in, in our current bylaw now that we've lived with it for a couple of years. Um, we, you know, we're, we're, we've yet to have any kind of income, but we're getting closer. Um, and there was a discussion on, you know, I think looking at your bylaw, you, this bylaw was looking to just um, shut down any marijuana anywhere in the RA district. Um, not obviously current ones that are already here, but anything new. Um, and I, I didn't really agree with that yet. Um, I just felt we needed a little bit more um, discussion and working together on how we want to you know, what is the RA district? What what areas of the RA district should be available or not available for uh, marijuana cultivation? We wanted to address, um, there was, there's an issue in our current bylaw that states that no marijuana facility could be within 2,000 feet of another marijuana facility. We wanted to correct that language and, and just change that to be within the town of Deerfield because if another facility goes into the Sugarloaf shops. We already have only one spot available in town for marijuana and uh, that would preclude that spot. So we wanted to kind of fix that language. So it was clear that, that we weren't prohibiting marijuana. If another facility went into the Sugarloaf shops, we would still allow one in Deerfield in that location. Um, and then we have the issue of um, processing the plants, um, processing the product and, Right now, our bylaw doesn't allow for processing. Um, I feel like it. Um, I would like to make our our current um, facilities uh, uh, the ability to to process marijuana where they are. Um, so, an existing facility. Um, and then I want to have a deeper discussion with your board and and the public on: um, Is there anywhere else in the RA district we feel a cultivation cultivation is appropriate. We were looking at in our MVP grant uh, to do a study of soils and to find out, you know, what areas of our RA district are, you know, obviously excellent for fertilization and for farming. Um, what areas are able to have houses built on and what areas are more, um, you know, compromised material, compromised land that you could support um, a grow facility or um, we're open to the fact of maybe not allowing any other uh, host agreements in the area. Um, but my concern was the bylaw that you have before you now was just limiting uh, any further uh, cultivation in town at all, period. And, um, and so I just want to have a discussion with that because I, I wasn't supporting that. And I wanted to go forward and work with this board on those issues. Where do we think it's appropriate? Um, and, and have the discussion of, of manufacturing or processing the plants where they are right now, um, and then fixing that 2,000 foot rule. So um, I just want to get, you know, you have new members. It's been a while. It's been, you know, feels like a 10 years since co Corona hit. Um, but I just wanted to kind of work with your board and to see how we could work together and put one bylaw before the town meeting instead of two conflicting, confusing bylaws. I, I really want to work with your board to, to find some Thanks. solution. So. Thanks very much. Um, just quickly, I want to point out that that 2,000 foot between uh, marijuana retailers, we did correct that in section 4666A3, yep. that we Correct. added the words within the town of Deerfield. So it's only comparing 2,000 feet to other businesses yep. already in the town of Deerfield. So. There you have that. So we've taken care of 50% of your uh, your issues there, Trevor. Um, <laughs> 20, I'll just I remind others that um, in the initial bylaw that we had out there, we said RA was good. Um, we allowed cultivation. At the time, we had many public hearings. A lot of people said, oh, yeah, we should help our farmers. If this is a, 
a, a crop that farmers could benefit from. That's great. So we allowed it in RA, as we've learned over the past couple of years, that uh, marijuana is not grown in the fields by farmers. It's grown in warehouses by um, mostly outside companies. So not that it's a bad thing. I'm just, this is just right. a fact. Right. Um, and so we uh, we heard from a lot of people saying that they thought that, that RA needs to be really cut out of there. Um, and we already, two have been approved in the locations that we, in our original zoning bylaws, those were the two locations we thought it would be appropriate. Uh, licenses have been given to those folks. They haven't opened for other reasons besides our bylaws. Um, and so, and I think only two are probably ever going to be in Deerfield because of the percentages and things. Although I guess you could have more cultivation, not, not retail. Right. Uh, right. Correct. So, Correct. so really, um, you know, our, our adopted, our uh, proposed bylaw now uh, sets up a separate district. So it's a marijuana overlay district. And so Denise and Annalie, just so you know, an overlay district is, is, is like a whole new district because RA and Center Village and those are all predetermined already. So if you want to create another one, we've done this with, uh, we did it with an adult, um, I forget, adult business overlay district. <laughs> um, and we did it with medical marijuana overlay district earlier. Um, so it's something that you do once in a while when you want to kind of pick sites in town that seem appropriate, but don't fit into a general category that already exists. So we call it the MO. We have two MO districts, marijuana overlay one and two. Um, and it's primarily st still where uh, across from Yankee Candle down off of five and 10, uh, where there is one already licensed and the other is the industrial uh, areas. I don't have the map in front of me, but we could get that uh, map up. So I guess the question, Trevor, is do you, do you want to, are you looking to change those marijuana overlay districts or is it just about allowing uh, processing at the current cultivation on Mill Village Road? Well, a couple of things. I think um, I don't want to preclude, you know, right now we can cultivate anywhere in the RA district by special permit of the planning board. Um, if you're looking to restrict that to um, only the places we have now, we have other, other entities. Look, a couple of things. So we need to drive revenue in town. And if we don't want our town to look like, you know, nine up five and 10, we need to look at ways that we can drive revenue. A couple of the ways to drive revenue is one manufacturing at current, current um, cultivation sites that, that will increase revenue without, much impact on on residents or any other thing that we're doing already and two you know we have other people coming to us all the time looking for cultivation so uh just to limit our our uh, income just because we don't you know we wanted to help farmers i mean that that's a great that's a great uh initiative i i'd love to do that myself but it, just because i'm not going to help a farmer doesn't mean I, I don't want revenue in town you know, our taxes keep going up. We have major projects that we need to take take care of. We have OPEB liabilities that are, are just astounding. So we can get new revenue into town driven to paying these things down and paying off, you know, OPEB liabilities. Um, I, I don't know where we're going to get the money to do any of that stuff. We're going to get hit 20, 30 years out unless we start looking at revenue that uh, won't seriously impact the residents and, and we will not be hitting them with taxes to pay for future retirees. So, you know, we would we would gear a lot of this money, you know, maybe looking at solar, looking at marijuana cultivation or manufacturing to try and drive revenue into the town. So we don't have you know, we can start limiting the liability on, on the taxpayers. So there's a couple ways to do that. New business in marijuana business or. So any thanks. Other Trevor. Yeah, we should hear from other folks. Thanks. Please. Any comments from folks on the planning board? Hello. We have a discussion right now. Exactly. Uh, what are we trying to accomplish in our meeting tonight in relation to either these bylaws or what Trevor has said? Our goal is to propose a revised marijuana bylaw to the to, to again just like we did with the floodplain is to make a recommendation to the next town meeting and 
in, in right currently, till we do this new bylaw, um, you know, cultivation is allowed all over in a large area. So there was some question whether in the interim we want to even put a moratorium on it. But I think we were hoping to do this proposed bylaw quick enough that, um, you know, this, that we wouldn't need to do that. So. To speak to what Trevor was saying, if I understand correctly, it sounds like there's a different proposed bylaw with the select board. Should we be mm -hmm. looking at both of these at simultaneous? Well, uh, so, so that's I, I neglected to, to to maybe say that. So while the planning board was working on this bylaw, a proponent of of another bylaw uh, did propose something and got enough signatures apparently and did what they needed to do to bring it to the select board. Um, and basically, that one was they wanted to do processing in the current cultivation facility out on Mill Village Road. So that's the major difference between these two, I think. Well, and they, um, they, they also had a whole lot more in there that we didn't agree with. I think, you know, at, at some point I'd love Don Dubendorf, Dubendorf to speak on the matter as well. But that, that, that bylaw that came to us was, uh, was, yes, manufacturing, but I think it was way too broad. It was going to allow manufacturing RA in any part or, or cultivation in any part of the district. And we just didn't feel we just felt like that was way too broad. And that's why, that's what drove me to say, let's work together with the planning board to maybe uh, compromise and come up with a bylaw that we could put one forward to the town instead of, you know, these competing select board and, and others. I have a question. This is yeah, Denise. Denise. Oh, um, can you define what you mean by processing? Mm -hmm. What exactly will be, is the process for processing? Does that mean? Which it, there is there's a lot of different definitions, and I think it's actually in. Is it? it, it, it do you have the? Um, I, I read through. It. Oh, I read through it. There's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so on page eleven, I think is uh, is the different uh, types of of establishment. Like, everything's called a marijuana establishment. That's like right. for everything. And then you have cultivators, product manufacturer, right. retailer, testing, micro business, research, yeah. transport. So the product, the manufacturer is taking it like a, a cultivator. They can take it, the leaves off and do things with it. So mm -hmm. they're doing some, some light processing and then yeah. they sell it to someone who makes it into another product. So right. actually make it into something that you can smoke or eat or something like that. That's that's the process. Okay. So, OK, got it. So, uh, Mr. Wake, maybe I could add a few words. Um, Please. I, I, I look at the proposed. Can you just, Don, I know you talked to people earlier, but just if you could just state your name and, uh, oh, and any connection, any yeah, connection you have to what's going on here. I'm glad you did that. I apologize. Uh, I'm Don Dupendorf. I'm an attorney from Williamstown and I represent uh, Sons Mass. And I'm here on their behalf tonight. Uh, I, as you know, I attended some of the prior Welcome. discussions of the consultants bylaw and uh, knew of the concern for uh, the RA district. Uh, I am of the mind that the RA district could accommodate other cultivation activity, probably not the entirety of it, and co-locate with manufacturing. When I heard the planning board concerns about the RA district, one of the things I asked the select board to do was to consider a zoning amendment that would do three things and essentially allow more discussion of your proposal. One was to fix the fact that right now you have a bifurcated approach that's not, it's not in concert with state regulatory regimes. You have a medical marijuana bylaw and you have an adult use bylaw. That's, uh, uh, that's just anti-historical. It's now you treat it all as one product and one process. Right. You manage it as yeah. one. So the first one would be to eliminate that bifurcation. The second one was to fix, because the selectmen made it clear that they wanted to fix that measurement distance between retail facilities. And the third one I proposed was to allow manufacturing to be co-located with, with an existing licensee, an existing approved cultivation facility. That would allow only one manufacturing uh, facility co-located with the existing 
cultivation facility on Mill Village Road. What that would do would freeze the rest of the IRA district as you all want to do, would allow you time to go through this bylaw uh, and, and, and frankly fix it in many ways. I think the bylaw is not, is, is, is not Deerfield, it's not Deerfield's best work. Uh, I think it can be fixed and made much easier in many ways. And I can give you some examples. It defines users. So can I just cut you off there? If I could just, so that is exactly, so I, I, I'm not sure if you've read this uh, one that we're working on now, but we did take the medical, we also, we agree the two would, you don't need the two. So we put medical into this and right. we took care of the 2000 feet. And so I think we've cleaned this up and um, it's let, getting- Let me give you a couple instances where medical is not cleared up, if, if I could. I have a numbered, uh, I have a numbered uh, lineage version of this proposed bylaw. If you look at the second, the second full paragraph of, of forty six sixty one. First of all, it references one hundred five CMR seven twenty five. Those are the old DPH regulations. There now, if you look at the CMR, those are reserved for further action. No such regulations exist there. In the last sentence of that paragraph, marijuana establishments will be permitted to provide the opportunity for legal cultivation, product manufacturing, and retail sale of marijuana or for non-medical adult marijuana use. Well, no, it's, it's going to be, what you ought to have is one bylaw for marijuana. Oh not medical or, or otherwise, you, you, the phrase in here repeats itself several times. There's references to, uh, there's references to uh, the medical marijuana business. If you look at the, uh, let me show you B4. All right, so, so, so Don, let me just cut you off again, please. Is, yes, we want to get rid of that and we'll work on that. So that's, that's a given. We all agree on that, I think. So what we were trying to do was avoid the collision of two bylaws, right? And and we agreed with the with the selectmen not to proceed with that Evans proposal. It did right. too much. It was overbroad. So we went narrow gauge and said, okay, select board, what needs to be fixed? Fix marijuana and fix uh, uh, medical and, and adult use. Fix the measurement, and then allow harvest to co-locate a manufacturing facility on its site. That's what we asked the board to do. That allows you to, to take your time and to do whatever you choose with respect to this bylaw. But there is a lot of work to be done on it. That's all I was suggesting, Jen. All right. Um. And I thought we should have a bigger discussion about the RA district. And I agree that a lot of the area isn't, isn't appropriate for, for manufacturing or cultivation but there may be a couple of areas that are, and to just do a wholesale um, moratorium or a um, wholesale cutout of any opportunity for economic development in the rest of the in the rest of the district doesn't. I mean, just because we're not helping farmers is not really the intent of the town. The town wanted to have marijuana cultivation. They wanted to have a retail store, and they want, you know, they want the money from this. So, um, so check, I, check, and check, um, Trevor. And that's not like. That's not anything that we're not in agreement with. We just felt okay. that the RA was too broad at the time. The word moratorium is an issue because there was a, there, the, the German Strang was about the moratorium at that time. So this got through because it was uh, not the moratorium. You know, our board was pushing for the moratorium. So I think that looking at the RA, it's a, that's a very broad swath of of the town correct and when you know and i think we need to work on that right i think we're in agreement yeah yeah so just okay. a whole a whole like more nothing time. in any ra district seems broad and i think anywhere in the ra district is broad and i thought we should just take time together over the next couple of months to kind of come up with a you know come up with a a way that we both agree like Maybe there is one or two areas that, that are that are appropriate and, and a whole bunch is not. Um, but I just didn't want to limit. 
what kind of what kind of conditions would you um, consider more appropriate? Under what conditions? Could I just jump in for one one second here? I'm, of course, I'm, this is Chris. I I, I want to just make sure that everybody's on the same page with what actually is being proposed here. We we have in the new bylaw established two new marijuana overlay districts, which are much larger and broader than the current marijuana overlay district. Um, Trevor, I'm not sure if you've seen that. Have, have you seen the new map? Uh, yeah. I have not. Okay, that's that's what I thought. Um, there is there's a there's a lot to to go over in this bylaw, and I'm not sure if we can go over it all here right this second. Correct. Your idea of having a, another meeting to go over it in, in greater detail. I would I would love that. Makes sense. But but to look at the map that the planning board has has uh, prepared and which shows the much broader marijuana overlay districts and the rationale for that. I think would be really important for the select board to understand. Yep. Um, I would love that. I, that's what I was hoping to get out of this meeting is just like, let's, let's take a pause and why don't we all look at it together? I'll learn from you. You could learn from us on what we were hoping to get. And, and maybe we could all come together with like a, a coherent you know, compromise that we could bring to town meeting. So we're all behind the same thing. And maybe we can, but I think we, I think we can get there. I think so too. I, I would like to propose, however, I would like to propose that uh, we consider and, and the planning board consider uh, a, a, a bylaw amendment that allows manufacturing to be co-located co at the existing facility. That, that, that existing uh, facility, uh, if it's co-located with manufacturing, at full production can yield somewhere close to a million dollars a year in revenue to the town. Uh, the planning board has gone through in great detail the, the conditioning of that special permit. Uh, there wasn't a lot of negative in the, um, uh, in the neighborhood, the butters, et cetera, about, about that process. The bylaw, the, the applicant in this case would clearly have to operate within the same footprint and the same conditions that were imposed on the site plan. So that's that's all I'm trying to do. I'm trying to put harvest into a, a sequence of time that allows them to move ahead without jeopardizing both planning board and select board concerns about the RA district and otherwise. Agreed. The language of the bylaw. I just, what I've really tried to do is take the Evans proposal collapse it to its barest, barest minimums and and proceed with that to po propose that to the select board, have them refer it back to the planning board for a public hearing and pre for presentation to the town meeting and such. This is going through with the process that we've discussed with uh, a town meeting. I mean, rather than trying to sort of truncate that and go forward with a lot of something now prior to really having our cleaned up bylaws, what would be the process or what would be the timeline, do we think, for having the having this cleaned up and for Well, I, I mean I I I just John missed quite a bit of, uh, you know quite a bit at the end. We, we were really just discussing what we were hoping to have done. Go ahead, John. Well, I was listening. I actually got on the phone and I could hear oh. most of it. Sorry, I, okay, good. Lost, I lost power. I didn't expect the meeting to go this long. Um, <laughs> so um, I, we do want to not take too much time. We've had a lot of public hearings on this. So yeah. Annalie and Denise, I, you know, I hope we can catch you up to speed. Yeah. I think you're right. We do need another public hearing. You know, We can make some of these changes about the medical, certainly. Um, I, I think the big issue is this this uh, processing at the current place right. on Mill Village, yeah. and you know, again, I don't think there's a lot of people in town who are have strong feelings. Um, it's a little spot zoning, which we always try to be careful about. If we say that okay, it's allowed here, but nowhere else. One place. So that's a that's an issue. I also just want to go back to what some of the points that Trevor raised, just to just to, um, and I appreciate he's a select board person. The planning board does not. Uh, 
we don't set up bylaws just to bring in money to the town. Okay, I just want to be clear about that. That's not why I got on the planning board. I'm not sure about mm -hmm. the but that's why I'm on the select board. Totally different. I, I said I said I give I defer to you as a select board, and that's that's fine that you can say it. But I just want you to know that we're that's not our priority. I understand that. Okay. Yeah. So that argument I'd rather that's not have. Dynamic. That. Right, right. You know, I I just don't want that to start to become the argument. Right. The, the thing is, is it appropriate or not to have these kind of businesses, and where should we put them? And, yeah. and let's let's stick to that. Um, so, um, I think we need to schedule a public hearing. I, I would like. Maybe we have a, I don't know, we do a little subcommittee in between or, or um, just to see, you know, just to work out where all the commonalities are so we can come yes. with the best best proposal. And then we get the public hearing to really hear from people. Um, I think, grateful for that. I'm not sure how we would send out a uh, notice to a, because it's a it's general be, bylaw, so we, it's not, it's but a people on Mill Village Road would want to know about hearing, it. But it's also a public hearing. I know, but people on Mill Village Road would like to hear that they should get a like, notification, maybe, but they won't because it's a general public hearing. Um, so maybe we just, maybe that's our job as planning board members to make sure people masks. Know you will have a public, a specific public hearing on any bylaw that has to go to town meeting. Yeah. You will have a, a specific language proposal, just like you did earlier in, in the evening with the right. bylaw. Yeah. If you you'll have notice to people that goes out for that. Right. That's how you do all your bylaws. Yeah, yeah. No, but what I'm saying, this is a general town bylaw, so we don't send out, you know, mailings to a butter. There's no butters. No, no, it's not a special permit hearing. That's correct. You don't right. You send it out to a butters. So if we change the bylaw, then we would have another special. Then we actually would have a special permit hearing for Mill Village Road, I guess. Actually, well, I'm pro I'm actually proposing I'm actually proposing that it be by right because it's already specially permitted. What I'm yeah. proposing is uh, that because it exists, you allow it to be co-located. If any changes get made to what was permitted, footprint, etc., it would have to go back to you for site plan approval amendments. So I'm just, I'm asking for a by right situation there. Oh, I'm sure you would ask for that, yes. But, but <laughs> we're, we're, that's not what we're asking for, so. Well, I didn't know that, John. I mean, but this is the first time we've had this conversation, so. I'm not, no, we've I'm, had this, I'm not trying to do a no, well I'm just trying no, to be direct. No about. offense to you, but we've heard from other people from Harvest for the no, past like three years, so. And just, we appreciate your candor. Uh, yeah. It's not. Yeah. And we'll yeah. do the same. We, I, we I, all need to represent our, our point of view and, and come oh, to some kind of... Frankly, and frankly, if, uh, if, if, uh, if, if you find me incredible at any point, please call me call me on it. I'm happy to be called incredible, and, and uh, I, don't, I don't look to be misleading under any, any stretch of the imagination. And just so, so Annalie and Denise know, this is not our the first time we've had the pleasure of uh, Attorney Dubendorf's presence at our committee. So, and we do appreciate him. So. He is a very well respected land planning person. Yep. You you will see his name on lots of different things that you want to read. So, so, so can we make a uh, John? Let so me just propose something. If you do have a, a a group that wants to work on it, I'm happy. Your existing bylaw, I'm happy to uh, plug in if you want me to. Because I, I, I do have comments about the text. Because I, I think, I think frankly, yeah. uh, do you feel even if you go with the substance of all this, I think the text needs help. Right. So, Chris, are you still there? Yes, I am. Can we uh, hire you to help us with this? You, you can. I, um, I, I don't currently have a contract with the town to work on this, but I'm, I'm happy to. Uh, to do that with you we could do a uh, I know most of your other contracts were with the town through another grant but this one we could just pay you out of I think the planning board has a budget for this kind of thing so let's talk to Casey uh, this week and see if we can get a contract for you um, I, th great. I think you you could you could work with the uh, attorney Dubender from some of that other because I know you wanted to get that medical language out of there too I think and uh, so um, sure. All right. So, but then the question is, we don't want to have a public hearing until we have a, mm -hmm. a, a better proposal. Yeah. So, um, I think we shouldn't do it uh, for the first Monday in August. Um, so, what time frame can we? Well, how long? What's the time frame? We're trying to think about, you know, t a town meeting, and you yeah. know, it, 
September may be too early. I could talk to Casey about that too, because it, it really depends on what the state comes out with for finances. So we can kind of yeah. deal with our budget and all that kind of thing. So there's some, a little bit of timing involved there. It may be October. Um, uh, I'll just see how many things are like forcing us to do a September kind of meeting. If we can hold off to October, that'd be great. And maybe we meet, you know, you have a public hearing in September, you know, something like that. We work through July and August. Or we could, we could do a special one if we needed to with late August even or something. Um, yeah. So I guess I'd ask for a planning board member or two to help spearhead this. Um, I'm, I'm going to be away for two out of the next three weeks, actually. Um, Including the including the first Monday of August, Rachel. <laughs> um, so, would anybody who would like to uh, follow up with? I think it's going to involve the select board, um, Attorney Dubendorf, Chris, and a planning board member. Don't everybody jump at once. I'll do it. Say that again. Do it. You want somebody from the planning board to be? I heard. I do it. Yeah, I that just volunteered, Paul. This is oh, Ann Mary. Ann Mary. Oh, thank you, Ann Mary. And I, I know Ann Mary and Max are out there hiding. So, um, <laughs> Max, you want to get in on this too? My feelings on this are pretty well known. <laughs> <laughs> Does that mean you don't want to be on the committee to help write the proposal, or, <laughs> or you do? Well. I don't think anybody's going to agree with me, so I'm I'm fine with being a, a vote of one. So imagine, just, imagine that. What, what they ask for production, and then when's he going to ask for retail? Nope. You know, for retail. one Stop. thing it's after scary. another. All right, and Mary, that would be terrific if you could uh, follow up with the with Trevor and and Chris. Um. And then the idea would be at maybe at our August fourth meeting, um, or whenever the first Monday of August is, we could have something that we could then say, okay, this is what we want to take to the public hearing. Have a public hearing the September, and have a good time. That'd be great. Yeah. Any the only uh, the only time constraint I would have is that any. Any uh, bylaw that's precipitated by a landowner, it's not by signature, it's by a landowner, would have to go first to the selectman for referral to the planning board. So I need some time there to work through that and, and then would ask that you guys schedule a public hearing if there was an alternative bylaw. Uh, and we'll look at that. But I'd like to get, I'd like to get that. we just see how that goes. We lost John again. Oh, there's John. Good. <laughs> All right. So we really we should wrap, wrap this up. up. Okay. So I'll re I'll reach out to to Ann Mary and um, Chris and and Don and we'll and we'll get back to you. You know that first Monday in August with uh, hopefully some sort of you know plan to go forward with a public hearing. Excellent. Thank you all very much. Great. Our next meeting, should we have it on the first Monday of August? It's August 3rd, I believe. Sounds good. I might, I might not be there. Does it, Do we still have a quorum? Is everybody else? I'll be there. I'll be here. I'll be there. Nice. I'll be wherever nice. there is. So <laughs> I move that we, uh, we, we yes, uh, that sounds good, John. I think we're at the end of our. Um, I was going to move that we adjourn. I think we're probably there. Um, anything, anything unforeseen? No. Nope. Old business, new business, nothing. All right. Thank you all for hearing me tonight. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you. Thanks, folks. All right, we have a motion to adjourn. A second. Second. All those in favor? I think we can take this. We can take this on a voice vote. Aye. Rachel Blaine, aye. aye. Hi, uh, everybody say their name. All right, Emily, seven, seven oh. All right. All right.